This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No, the Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done, he showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach Be Your Voice, Not an Echo. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Ambassador Chantrell Davis. Today I am going to begin with a short prayer because a lot of the time I'm going to, uh, from now on, be just spending time with the Lord before I come on. There will be short prayers that I will give, but there's so much for me to minister. Um, there is a prayer list, of course, of all the, not all of them, quite a few of the prayers uh, that I've done, and I did that so that you could get in the habit of praying scriptures but a lot of the prayer time i'm going to spend before the lord and i will do short prayers before i begin ministering uh that we come together in one accord but there is no time and there is no space by way of the spirit no matter what day we come in before you receive and hear this word so bring your hearts and mind together in one accord uh, uh let's do a quick prayer and let's go before the lord boldly holy and acceptable Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we are alive for such a time as this. I thank you, Father God, that we are awake because you sustained us, Father God. We thank you for your redemptive power, Father God, and your justification that we have by way of the Spirit, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we have life and life more abundantly than you, and we are alive for such a time as this, Father God. Father God, as the speaker of the house to say, Father God, and the minister of this word, I yield to the speaker of this house that is the Holy Spirit. Not my will, but your will, Father God. Not my words, but your words, Father God. Not my opinions, Father God, but your thoughts, Father God. For I surrender to them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, Father God. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, Father God. Strengthen us with almighty according to your glorious power, Father God. Fortify us, Father God. Let us speak right words in due seasons, Father God. Awaken in us a pure heart and a pure mind, Father God. Cause us, Father God, with our will to come into alignment with your holy consults, that our plans will be established, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that your hand is with us. Thank you, Father God, that you've enlarged our coast. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you are, your, you are with us, Father God, and you keep us from evil, that we be not grieved from it, Father God. We thank you that by way of grace through faith, Father God, and by way of the blood of Jesus, Father God, that we are blameless, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We are unreprovable, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We are holy and acceptable, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for the keys to the kingdom that you, you have given me, that what I bind on earth is bound in heaven, what I loose on earth is loose in heaven. Father God, so in the name of Jesus Christ, we come together in one accord, and any force, Father God, any entity, any action, any projection, Father God, all satanic activity, Father God, and any demon in any level, in any name, they are named. We bind right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree the mischief they plan they would not be able to perform every word that is risen against us in judgment i thank you that it is already condemned father god i bind every mouth father god of distraction i bind every whisper and spirit father god i bind every lying tongue father god and i decree and declare null and void every liar and weight of the enemy father god i decree and declare overwritten every time set of the enemy with the set time of the lord father god for your plans for us are good and not evil plans of hope future and expected end and it shall be with us this day father god according to your word according to your will according to our heritage father god according to your plans and purposes father god and your goodness toward us this day father god and all things that oppose that goodness, all things that oppose our heritage, all things that oppose the justice that you have decreed for us, Father God. We bind and we decree the mischief they plan they would not be able to perform, Father God. And every evil word, Father God, spoken over every evil altar and even the evil altars of their heart. I decree shall not stand, neither shall they come to pass. For it is well with us this day, Father God. We bless you with all our soul, Father God. And we thank you that all that is within us blesses your holy name. And we forget not all your benefits, who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all our diseases, who redeemeth our life from destruction, who crowneth us with love and kindness and tender mercy, Father God. God. We thank you, Father God. Give us right words in due season, Father God, continually, Father God. And how forcible are these right words, Father God. Bubble up the wellspring of wisdom that is in our belly, Father God. In the name of Jesus, continually give us an unction from the Holy One that we know all things, and a mouth and wisdom that our adversaries can neither gain, say, nor present. We present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, Father God. For you who have begun this good work in us will continue to the day of Christ, Father God. Faithful are you who called us, who also will do it. We trust that, we believe that, and we speak that, Father God. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I seal this prayer and I say amen. Okay, beloved, I got a lot of, uh, a lot of prophetic words, uh, a lot of instructive words, uh, but I told you this is the time you have to start to enact not only your angels, you have to enact your heritage, your jubilee, and what the word of God says concerning you. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what mistake you have made, you have got to begin to speak his words and his words only. Because the Lord gave us the word. And you are, when you come into agreement with that word by way of speaking, uh, those of you who don't know, I've already told you, I had a message that, uh, about his holy counsel. That's going to help you. His testimony is his word. His commands are his words. 
his uh, uh, what's the other word? About? His counsels, his commands, his testimony is his word. And if you go listen to that message, you're gonna see how all of that literally means his word. That is what it is meant by we overcome by the word, every word that proceeds out of his mouth, by the word and by his testimonies. His testimony, he said the word, we read the word and we say it back. That's your testimony. Not you saying, well, I used to be a crackhead. Or you, you know, that's, that's testifying. Your testimony is you saying what the word of God says you have, what the word of God says you are, who you are. And it must be in your heart because I already told you out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Only what is in your heart will come out, especially when pressure is applied. Uh, applied. We are to be the salt of the earth. And I already told you as I did this short post, many have settled for salt alternatives. What a down word. Things that just make you feel good and not address what's dealing in you. Because you're righteous no matter what mistake you make. That's what I need to get you to understand. Your profession of the word will make you do those things that's in your flesh less and less. But even when you have made a mistake, your righteousness at that point did not change. That only changed if you decide to leave Christ. You decide not to abide in him. I told you not the striving of the lust in battle. Falling, uh, striving is against sin is not falling in sin. You're righteous every moment of the day, and the enemy is going to attack that like never before. Even through your dreams. A lot of you are experiencing heavier warfare dreams than you've ever experienced. That's because you're being successful. That's because you are successful. So you're getting fight. And it's making you think you're doing something wrong. It's making you think that maybe you ain't righteous. It's making you think that maybe you got to do something else. You, The Lord told us what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Okay? And what we bind is bound and what we loose is loose, which means if you permit it, you got to speak the word, which means you have to know the word and what it says concerning you. And that all authority he's given to man unto this time that I told you, even the earth is travailing against the very man that was created to rule it because the earth knows who created it. And it's, it's just as Bishop McClendon said, one of the most powerful things is that in this season, the Lord is moving. He's moving and he's doing mighty things. And everyone who is not, you heard me speak about timing, y'all. Any those of you who have followed long enough, though, I've said this over and over again. Out of a timing, out of alignment, out of order, you are in the darkness. As the Lord moves, whoever is not in alignment with his movement gets adverse experiences. Those who are in alignment with his movement experience his goodness. As the Lord spoke prophetically upon me as I ministered the word the other day, what prepare to meet your God? What side of him are you going to see? What facet of him are you going to see? It would determine you coming into alignment with his movement. You can be righteous. You can be saved. But you have not been listening and hearkening and being sensitive to his movement. So you can end up being on the adverse side of that because you are not where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be, with whom you're supposed to be. So you experience adverse reactions and you take offense because you think it's because you're not righteous. That's not what it is. You, you, you have to sit still to be able to be and move and remain with your Lord. He said he would never leave you or forsake you. But I told you what the Lord spoke to me. That, that's not the same as him being with you. That means you are with him in his movement and his timing and what he is saying now. So you can't override the word relevant. When the Lord told me 411, relevant truth now is his rhema word. And his rhema word comes with revelation. They are not separate. That's like goodness and severity. Drinking and swallowing. One can't be without the other. His relevant word comes with his revelation. For his word is alive. And quicken. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Like this word I'm about to deliver now. Woe to you souls. You ministers. You leaders. You, you apostles and teachers. Who don't even want to train people up under you. Or you reject people. Let me, I, I'm going to get into this word. I'm going to get into this word. Because some of you had um, favoritism and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Partiality in your heart. So the enemy was, hey, you gave the enemy place to poison you against someone's sin. This is a time where certain leaders you're going to see fall and you're going to see go home. Okay? And some of them are going to experience a very hard fall because Saul's fall was not pleasant. Okay? This is a prophetic word. 
as I moved and I ministered, I was listening to a teacher. And as I walked through, the, I heard the Lord, I heard the Spirit of God say, beware of it. You know, that's when I, I posted beware of the clicks. Uh, that the one who was despised was left out in the field and he was the anointed one. He was despised. They didn't even think, they, didn't, they thought so little in him, even though he said bring, the, the prophet came in and said bring all your sons. David was left out in the field. He wasn't even accounted, even though he was one of the sons. He wasn't even thought of. The man said all your sons. He was so despised, he was left out in the field. And he was the anointed one. Okay? And this is what many of you are experienced. I know I have. But I also was given understanding that I could use their names right now because the Lord has the Lord gave me over two, three years ago the ability to uncover them. Up for the people who I, I, I respected and have held in my heart no other way but with respect, privately and publicly. And they went in with they, they witchcraft hearts and they tainted and poisoned. And the only reason why it was received is because they were partial in their hearts for those people. And that the Lord said, if you are partial in your heart, you will stop what the Lord can show you because you put this person up here and you assume. And so you're partial and you've already kind of shunned that way. So you can't even hear or see what the Lord would have you see. And they were 100% wrong. And these are people I know moving by the Spirit of God and they still didn't see it because of the partiality. They, the enemy would do that. He would send in tainted voices, whether spiritually or physically. They listened to that voice and they were not able to see witches and people with ill hearts right there. I mean, literally people that came to me to talk about the prophetess, that came, with the, came to me to talk about the other woman of God. And when I shut them down, they went and poisoned them against me. And lied on me wholeheartedly. I know it could have uncovered it. But you know what? That's the higher way. And do not think the Lord didn't bring me closer to him because of it. You got to be willing to burn. Is it worth it? Even when the Lord said enough and I could uncover. Nope. All the way out. And it's rough. Okay. Have people thinking away of you when you wouldn't. With the honor you carry you would never do. That's a hard thing. He said you blessed. If men should say all evil things about you for his sake, for the glory, the, the, the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. I'd rather have the spirit of glory and of God rest upon me. And y'all can think of me what y'all want. The Lord, the Lord will reveal that in his time or maybe in the kingdom. Who knows? I've accepted it. Let me get into this word. This title may change depending on the Lord. Y'all know how this go. Okay. This is a prophetic word. I'm prophesying this. This is what will come to pass. This is a prophetic word, for this is a prophetic time. There is open heavens. The rise of the Davids. These are people of an excellent spirit. You know what David? David did everything that the Lord ever asked him except one thing. That's why David did all this stuff. And he said he would never forget the mercies to David in his house forever. Okay, and our King and our Lord and our Savior came from him with all the stuff he did. I want y'all to catch it. David was the first one. He was a foreshadowing for many things. He was a foreshadowing of the grace. He was a foreshadowing of the most mercy. He was a foreshadowing of the king, priest, and prophet all in one because he wore the ephod when nobody but the Levites was supposed to wear the ephod. He was a king. He was a prophet. He wore many mantles. And likewise, you will have many mantles because I know I operate more than one. Big why? Because we're moving into the fullness of the stature. He said we have all these fivefold gifts until the fullness of the stature, the full measure of Christ be formed in you. Because anything Christ needed to be, he was. Just like a prophet, uh, uh, just like Paul, he was a prophet, a teacher, and a prophet, apostle, a prophet, and a teacher. But he worked in the fullness. Okay, this message again: the rise of the Davids. The fall of the Saul's, the Lord has judged. Catch this. He has judged between you and them. This is people you are like me. That even though they received wrong, even though you got lied on, even though you were only there to serve with your heart and be a support, they did not receive you. Even though they were speaking in there, they truly never received you. They rejected you. They never truly received you in. And then they received ill will of you, just like Saul did. Whether it was by way of the spirit, they was listening to whispering spirits and serpent spirits and 
or they was listening to people who had the wrong heart. But either way it go, they received wrong concerning you, and some of them were in competition with the glory that was on you. Because yes, they burned the light, but you can't help the light that the Lord has put in you. They burned the light, and you came into the presence with a greater light. That has nothing to do with you being better. The call the Lord has put on you and the portion he has put up on you, you have nothing to do with. David had nothing to do with the call that was put on him. He was out there attending to his sheep, minding his own business. He had nothing to do with the call the Lord put on him. And he was hated because of the glory upon him. Many of you are rejected by your spiritual fathers and people who you looked up to because of the glory that is up on you. And you have nothing to do with it. So the Lord... It's taken offense. They have offended and have been against the Lord because you had nothing to do, nor do you have anything to do with what he put in you. You can't boast because everything you have, you got from the Lord your God. And they have hated you because of that, because they want the preeminence. And that the grace that you flow in is different. And if people were happy with their portions, the enemy could never play this upon people. I've experienced it and I know what happened. That many people will run you out of places you go to fellowship online and on media. Just to, you are truly there just to support. And some of them are using the word of God, that using the word that the Lord gave you. So they don't want you on there. So when they're using some of the stuff the Lord gave you, you don't get to hear it. It could be the leaders and the people in the group. But they because of their partiality, they received that. You came in with an earnest heart. These are people who had earnest hearts. Or you couldn't be called a day. A honest heart toward these people. And they did not receive you because of what was in them. But what the, the spiritual demonic voice or the physical voice that they listened to that was moved and motivated by demonic forces. Through their jealousy and competition with you. And to, through their need. And these souls and these leaders have ejected you without cause. Have caused you to operate in the background and out in the field when the Lord has sent you to do more because of the light that they perceive in you. And it's the time of their removal. And the Davids will arise. Some will go home through death. Some will go home through falls, humiliation, being humble. Okay? I don't have to say this to you, those of you who I'm calling Davids of the Spirit, because you never lifted your mouth against them publicly or privately. These are people that even though they did this to you, you honored them in your heart even from a distance. You never helped them wrong even in your heart. Even though you knew you were being done wrong by them. You never helped them different in your heart. And you always respected them when you saw them. And you were always ready to serve. But that spirit that they yielded to, they're yielding to it, wouldn't allow it. And enough time has gone by. Okay? The rise of the Davids. The fall of the Saul's. For the Lord has judged between you and them. He has seen. Okay? This word of the Lord came July 30th. The 20th, okay? I'm delivering it this day on August the 13th. Because there's a lot of messages I'll have to type back and back, okay? You who had the spirit of this Davis who are is in this, you continued service in the midst of wrong. Some of you are serving right up under them. Some of you are working with them. Some of you are doing it online. And they never really acknowledge you. And they make it known that they acknowledge other people and not you on purpose. It's on purpose. Don't think it's on mistake. It is on purpose, okay? Continue to honor, you continue to honor them in the midst of the role, though you were, were though you were, were not permitted in. You were never really allowed to really come close. They'll only let you do so much, and, and they always seem to recognize others over you. This is intentional. Don't think it's no mistake, okay? Okay? You notice, I want you to make notes of these things before I get into this message, that David, no matter how much Saul pursued him and did wrong, he kept saying, my father, what have I done? This is how you hold it in your heart. I've done nothing but serve them. Pri privately and publicly, I've done nothing. And you, you are really there honestly. And the people who they are lifting up are there with their own agendas. And the only reason why this was allowed is because the partiality they had in their heart for these people against you. Uh, you most of you have been on this channel before. You heard me tell you before. I don't care how you love somebody, how close you are to somebody. You deal with everybody on an equal playing field. Which means that you have to be willing to see whatever the Lord will show you about that person at any given time he's willing to show it. That you are not partial. You got somebody so high. that Because I'm telling you, what happened to me, they went right in and lied. They made it like I was picking on them. They made it like I was liking everybody's post for thirds because they had got caught. 
They came to me talking about the prophetess. They came to me talking about somebody else on the channel and I shut them down and rebuked them and they thought I was going to expose them when I had more integrity than I rebuked them and I covered them in the correction because the Lord said, will you cover them in the correction? So I said nothing. Why? For the unity of the spirit so that there would not be unity broken in this place while the Lord was attempting to get them to turn, which they did not turn. Because he gave me the, eventually the ability to uncover. But I bore it and I, I promise you I'm still suffering some of it today. Because they believed that of me. When it, was, it never happened. Two different people came and were sent in with utter wickedness. And they was holding them up high. And they had no idea they had come to me trying to put their mouth on me. And I rebuked them. And they lied on me. And I trust me. I saw open at things being sent toward me. And I kept my mouth shut. And still got on there serving and praying. It's the hard way. Keep going. Keep your integrity. This is why this is coming forth, okay? Okay? And you help them in your heart, right, privately and publicly. You have helped them as your father, though you were rejected without cause, though you were never accepted in, though they only let you do so much, they are literally trying to suppress your spiritual growth. Even though they're teaching, that kind of push out and belittlement, you, you can't grow when someone's trying to cap you. They're attempting to cap you by the treatment of you. I want you to catch that. It's the treatment of you. Because if they can cause you to be wounded, they can cause you to fall on off and to stay small. Okay? Let me read uh, 1 Samuel 24 and 10, 10 through 17. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee today into my hands in the cave. And some bade me to kill thee. Because some of the stuff you can do to uncover people, that's a spiritual killing, okay? But my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against the Lord. For he is the Lord's anointed. I want you to catch this. Saul was only anointed and the Lord was only with him two of these years. He was in reigning 40. David was running 30 years. 20, 30 years, a long time. This man kept trying to kill him, and he still admonished him. With it. And the Lord gave him over into his hand. Anybody who has read this, go read Sam, 2 Samuel on your own. He had given him over to be put to death more than once. Even after his spirit left Saul, he gave him an opportunity to. And he did not. He wasn't trying to spur him from taking his life. Because David was a king of uh, war, which is why his son Samuel had to build the temple and David couldn't because he's been, he was a man of war in righteousness who killed a lot. So he said it would be your son that would build my house. OK, um, but he did not because he honored it and he loved it and was ejected without a call just because of his guilt. Let me tell you, I've experienced this. I don't think it. I know it. And some of you have. I want you to catch this. The Saul didn't have the right heart because he was impartial. He was partial in his heart. Because the enemy can only tempt you with what's in you. He can't tempt you with what's not in you. So when they started singing the song, the Saul has killed his, killed his thousands, but David, his ten thousands of thousands, trust me, some of you have had words you delivered that people that follow these ministers and people that are under these ministers circulate your word or talked about that word and it caused them to eject you. They circulated and they spoke about, boy, that word was good. And it started to cause them to despise you. And it had to be something there or it cannot be done. He was given over to him more than once, okay? That means you have had more than one opportunity to be dishonorable. You've had more than one opportunity to uncover what you know. You have more than one opportunity because you know the thing that they may not be walking as perfect as they do. And things like this where even they, you can see things they couldn't see. Because trust me, these people, they didn't see these two people that came against me and lied were straight caught because they came trying to betray them and I shut it down. And they went and lied on me. And they received that lie and they acted out and rejected me. Some of you have suffered this. In great capacity, even in local church, local sanctuaries. People that you were under and people who were supposed to be your spiritual fathers and mothers. Yes, we're going to go that dirt. Okay? Because the spiritual mothers are doing it too. Y'all better take this in the spirit. Okay? And he gave him more than one time to turn him over. Okay? Let's go to verse uh, 11 through 12. David held him as a father, though he was wrongfully ejected. He kept holding him as a father. That means how you honor them in your heart. 
privately and publicly, you still have no ill against them, even though they have just continually ejected you and suppressed you. Even if they don't tell you to leave their group or tell you to leave, you the treatment is very clear. It is undeniable, even if they don't say it with their words, okay? You've perceived it because the light is in you. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For, it, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe. That's very telling too, but I'm going to keep going, okay? And kill thee not. He cut off the skirt of his robe. Oh, this is his mantle. He fragmented. Oh, and he didn't kill him, but he's fragmented right there. He fragmented right there with the skirt of that robe gone. Let me keep going. Know thou and see that there is neither. He said no and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. And I have not sinned against thee. That means privately or publicly, you've done nothing but right by these people. Yet thou huntest my soul to take it. They hunt your soul by making you feel small. They hunt your soul by not acknowledging you. They hunt your soul by uh, ejecting you. They hunt your soul by suppressing you. They hunt your soul by showing partiality to the other openly. And they clearly making a difference in how they treat you and them. They are hunting your soul because that is an attempt to entrap the soul. And that is not the Lord. That's how they take it. You hunt my soul to take it. Okay, the Lord has judged. Catch this. The Lord has judged between you and them. Let me put this in the middle because I got that in the wrong place. I don't like to do that. Okay, let me keep going. Verse 12. The Lord judged between me and thee, and the Lord avenged me of thee. Avenge means justice. That's the vengeance of the Lord, which is the time we are in now. Jubilee. I'm going to have a message. I'm going to deliver that because you need to start declaring your jubilee. You are in jubilee. Okay. And the Lord avenged me of thee, but my hand, your hand, shall not be upon thee. You have done nothing ill to them, inwardly or outwardly, and the Lord has seen it, okay? Even though you could. Excuse me, because you are moving in just, even though you've stayed in order. The Lord is not playing. Those who will yield to him, he need to use, and he's not going to let anyone suppress, even those who are over you. They have abused their position. As said the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but mine hand should not be upon you. He's, thought, he's prophesying to him right here. The Lord has avenged me of you. And he said as a, a proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceeded from the wicked. Saul had become wicked. Even though he was chosen of the Lord, catch this. Chosen of the Lord and was wicked. His fall had already begun. But my hand should not be up on thee. Joe, David chose the higher way. He was more anointed and more powerful just by yielding. Even after the Lord turned him over. And many of you have operated in this as I have. You have operated in this. And the Lord has seen. This is the time. Okay. Verse 14. After whom is the king of Israel come out? And then he even tried to flatter him. I'm small. Because David had just came into the place. He said, after whom do the king of Israel come after? After who do thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea? Because that's what he was treating him like. He said, I'm small. I just came into this kingdom. I was a shepherd out in the field. And you just like happy to be there. And they come out of you. You just happy to be there. Who am I that you so threatened by me? Let me tell you something. Many of you don't realize how great you are until you've been attacked by somebody because their spirit and the spirit in them has beheld the spirit in you and they know what you carry. They know what you possess and they know what you have. The spirit in them can see the spirit in you. I keep telling you, you got spiritual eyes. That's why some people will respond when you come around and they just hate you because the light in you is shining a, the, the light on that dark spirit of earth and you are hurting their spiritual eyes. And they don't even know why in the flesh. They just annoyed. They don't, I just don't like them. You know, no, that's that spirit in them that's being blinded by the light. The greater light has come into the room. They know who you are. And they know what you carry. They know you loaded. And they're trying to take your soul. The Lord says not so. They shall proceed no further. They shall proceed no further. The rise of the Davids and the fall of the Sauls. Okay. Verse 15. The Lord therefore be judged. And judge between me and thee. And see. You can say that without a call. Judge between them and I. And plead my cause 
and deliver me out of thy hand. He prophesied it and it came. Okay, let me move forward. Right before they are removed, I want you to catch this. This is what some of you going to experience. Some going to just go home. But this is what some of you going to experience. Right before they are removed, they're going to realize that you have behaved righteously and that they are an error. But it, it's still done. Okay, it's done already. And it came to pass that when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, even though he still kept pursuing them, they're going to realize it. But what's in them so strong, they can't, they can't let go. they still not going to step aside. Okay, I'm going I'm, to I'm keep going on this. And it came to pass that when David had made an end to speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, is this the voice like he came to himself? Is this the voice of my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he cried. They're going to cry. It's going to be some crying. Publicly or privately, it's going to be some crying. Okay? And he said to David, thou art more righteous. They're going to realize it. They, they ain't done nothing to me. I've done them wrong. And that's them saying they are more righteous than I am. And he said to David, thou art more righteous than I. For thou hast reward, rewarded me good. Whereas I rewarded the evil. Because they are rewarding you evil. For your kind heart. For your servant attitude. For your surrendering. For your looking to them for guidance. For your looking to them to grow. For your looking to them to just receive you in into fellowship. How good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. As they should. But they have rewarded you evil for good in their treatment of you. And in their making a clear distance, difference between you and other people in your sight so that you could, so you could observe it. It's on purpose. Okay? Now, I'm going to read this in the Good Word version real quick, okay? Because I had to put it in here. I must have liked the way it read. It had to be important. 1 Samuel 24, 10 through 17. Today you saw how the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. He handed them over. And many of you, they have been handed over to you, but you will not do it. Because you're honorable. Not because you're weak. Because you're honorable. Because you're just. And because you trust God. Just as the Lord said, the Lord judged between, uh, uh, David said, Lord, judge between me and thee. But as Christ Jesus said, he could, he said, he submitted himself to him who judges righteously. Let the Lord do it. He's going to always get it right. Although I was told to kill you, I spurred you. There's plenty of people saying, you know, you got stuff on them. You know what you've just seen them do. You know this is the kind of stuff you're going on. You know you could just tell it. You don't do it. Okay? I will not raise my hand against you. Your majesty, uh, your majesty, because you are the Lord's anointed. My master, look at this. My master, look at this. The border of your robe is in my hand. Since I cut off the border of your robe and didn't kill you, you should know and be able to see. I mean, no harm, no harm, catch this, or rebellion. You have not been in rebellion to the order of the Lord in nothing. Not even in your heart have you been in rebellion. Not in your actions have you been in rebellion. He said, I mean, no harm. You ain't tried to harm them, nor have you rebelled, but they have still treated you differently and helped you, Lord, and intentionally tried to make you this fall because the light in you is great. That is the portion the Lord has given you. I'm going to give this example, and I'm going to keep reading this. Is that there are differences of administrations. There's a commission that he gave all of us to go forth, to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the sick, cast out devils. That is a corporate. Every, everybody who believes the Lord God and filled with the Spirit can do that. But there's people like Smith Wiggleworth that kicked the baby off the stage and the, and, and the baby the, the, uh, uh, could walk when he was in a wheelchair. Woodward Etta and various other ministers that I can't remember the guy's name, but they yell fire and everybody just fall out on the stage. And one guy that used to just come and pull people out their wheelchair and they, they grew legs. Everybody can't do that. And you need to be happy with your poor, just like everybody can't sing. Do everybody get mad because everybody can't sing? We have a corporate anointing that everybody can do, but there are certain administrations that is up on you. And some of these people have recognized this and they want to... Suppress that because why they love the preeminence. How do I know he loved the preeminence? Because when they said David had killed a thousand, uh, Saul killed thousands, and David has killed a thousand, why did he curse? Them are them a thousand slaves for the Lord. That's how I would look at it. Yeah, how do I care how many you saved, how many follow you? Or uh, you know, if people got followers, but they ain't saving nobody. And you didn't allow the Lord to use you to bring them to Christ. Hey, all spirits of God going to Christ, to God be the glory. It ain't your glory. So these people want the preeminence or, the, or this could not affect them. 
Okay, let me keep going. He said, I mean, no harm or rebellion. I have sinned against you uh, 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 or rebellion. And he said, I have I haven't sinned against you, but you are trying to ambush me in order to take my life. May the Lord decide between you and me. And he has. OK, may the Lord take revenge on you for what you did to me. And he has. However, I however, I would not lay my hand on you. It's like people used to slay, say a long time ago, wickedness comes from the wicked people. Indeed. OK, and they wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't some wickedness. There. Wickedness is twistedness. Wickedness ain't got nothing to do with being unsaved. Wickedness is twistedness in your concept and in your walk. It's a perverse way of walking. So you can be in the Lord and be wicked. Here's like I said, you wicked servant. He was a wicked servant. He became twisted. What twisted him? He wanted the preeminence. When we know the Lord, our God is the only one who has the preeminence. He was twisted in his concept, twisted in his behavior, twisted in competition. These were not the spirits of a God. This is earthly, sinful, and devilish wisdom. This is not the wisdom that proceeds from above. So Saul had become wicked. Okay? He said, but I will not lay hand on you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? One flea? You, he said, you put all your time on me? And I've done nothing to you. Okay? These people are gunning for you. They're gunning for you in the spirit. They're trying to suppress you. By wounding you. They're trying to create wounds. And it is motivated by a spirit that is not God. Yes, saved people can be motivated by spirits that are not of God. When they get in their flesh, that's what the enemy has been given control over, the flesh, to eat dust all the days of his life. And when they get in the flesh, which is selfishness, jealousy, competition, comparison, I need to be lifted up. Because they're not, they not lifting the Lord how they're lifting themselves up. The enemy has an entrance to use them. They have become his hands and feet against you. Because the enemy sees what's in you. I want y'all to catch this. That's what started. He will use what's in them that is twisted, that is perverse. To come against you because that light you loaded. And he needs to wound you so that it ain't successful. He needs to wound you so that you walk crooked too. He needs to wound you that you grow crooked. He needs to wound you that your foundation is not secure. He needs to dab you with untempered martyr so that you fall later. And I decree and prophesy this day, it shall not be for you. The mischief they planned, they will not be able to perform. This is the rise of the Davids and the fall of the Sauls, says the Lord. And I prophesied it to you this day. The mischief they planned against you, they won't be able to perform. The Lord has judged between you and them. Let's read verse 15. So the Lord must be the judge. He will decide between you and me. He will watch and take my side in this matter and set me free from you. You are set free from these wicked souls who were trying to suppress you because they are removed. It happens in the spirit. They are removed. Okay. Verse 16. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, is that you speaking, my servant David? And Saul cried loudly. He came to himself again because he's motivated by a wicked spirit. He told David, you are more righteous than I. You treated me well while I treated you badly. You hear me? You treated them well continually, and they treat you bad continually. They eject you continually. They clearly treat people different in your eyes so you can see continually because they're trying to wound you. The spirit motivating them is trying to wound you because it sees you are loaded with the kingdom. And you are loaded with the kingdom with a pure heart. So it will move through you as a holy conduit. And you will effectively effect change in this earth. The mischief they plan, they will not be able to perform. Let me keep going. You load it. You load it with kingdom with a pure heart. Okay. And the enemy is motivating them through whatever he's found in them to wound you that you grow crooked, that you become perverse. Do not allow it. Keep, keep your integrity. Don't allow it. Okay? Grace Nuggets. They listen to the voices. This is a plenty of things. It's, it's all kind of ways this kind of stuff can get in people. They need to be lifted up. They like the preeminence. The uh uh, uh, partiality, jealousy, competition, envy. They have, people will say they don't have it, but something's there 
there's no other way for them to be blind to the people that are aligned or attacking or any other thing but if there's something there. Everybody is righteous in their own eyes. Okay? They listen to the voices spiritually or physically. You just heard me say this. They receive lies from those who had envy. Because that was definitely the case with man. Okay? They receive words from those who were uncovered. Okay? They being anointed still couldn't see their error. They still can't see the error. They receiving from spiritual voices and physical voices that are both motivated by evil. And what has gotten in them that will cause the enemy to be able to use them as this tool because they're being used. Okay? It don't matter. You, you, you can be righteous and you keep getting until the enemy or fall will come. Okay? Their being anointed still couldn't see those who spoke lies. They were anointed and could see those who spoke lies. Okay? They were given time. They were given time. Yet they worship their own mind. Because given time means the Lord been trying to show them and communicate. They see that you haven't done wrong. They see how you are. They've been given time. Worship in their own mind means they have put you in a place and that's where they have held you. Okay? Enough. Yet they refuse to address it and love the preeminence. Okay? The one who was despised, as I said, was left out in the field. Y'all better be worried these clicks because the one who burned the anointing was the one you thought little of and you left out in the back. Okay? The Lord is not going to have it. Let me keep going. The spirit of the Lord, the light left Saul and came upon him. You already heard me say, before some of them are removed, just as verse 16 says, they're going to realize that they were wrong about you. They're going to realize it, but they're already removed. Okay? The spirit of the Lord left Saul. It was, you notice it was all this process. Then the spirit of the Lord left Saul. Okay? Oh, no, no. Let me go. This was after the fact. So I want y'all to catch this. This is 1 Samuel 24 and 10. Down here, this is 1 Samuel 16. The spirit of the God had already left Samuel. And David still would not touch him. Many of y'all, they're going to still be there for a minute. But the spirit of God, meaning the illuminate, the light. The power, the anointing to get results. That means, you know what, the, the anointing is God being with you. He ain't with them no more. He never leaves and forsake me. You save with you is something different. Okay? I, I've explained that more than once. 1 Samuel 16, 13 through 14. The oil is the anointing. And the anointing is the Lord being with you. He's being with you. I'm going to read this scripture. Then Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother. Okay. Oh, no, okay. This is a different one. Oh, no. Nope. Same one. Okay. Anointed him in the midst of his brother. So we already know this was when he, David first got anointed when he was left in the field. Y'all can read that on your own time in Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 16. And the spirit of the Lord came up on David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So even the day that uh, uh, door, uh, uh, David got anointed with oil, the spirit left. Because some of you have been operating under these people and you grow. And the spirit of the anointing came up on you. And that leader is no longer moving in illumination, which is why it's so easy for him to attack you, okay? Or them. It could be a sheep. Y'all want you to take this with spiritual mothers and fathers. Take this with spiritual mothers and fathers. But the spirit of the Lord departed Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. They troubled. Okay? 1 Samuel 16, 13, 4, I'm going to read the Amplified. Then Samuel took the horn of the oil and, the, and anointed David in the presence of his brothers, in the presence of his brothers, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily, mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and terrified him. Okay? Catch that word. The spirit of the Lord and illumination going to leave him. This is a dark time, and they're going to be tormented by the things they've done. Of course, they're going to have to repent. The rise of the Davids and the falls of the Saul for enough time. It's been enough. It's enough. Okay. You were righteous publicly and privately. You rise. You Davids who shall rise. And this is spiritually speaking. 
male or female, you were righteous inwardly and outwardly. And the Lord has seen this. Okay, and this is why. The Lord no. And I want y'all to catch this, okay? So this is why this is happening, okay? The Lord no longer answered them. They're not going to get answers no more. They're going to start to see this stuff. 1 Samuel 28, 4 through 6. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shannon. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw, when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. Okay, and this is an army. This is just take this spiritually and physically. There's so much coming up on this earth that, yeah, they all wicked. This is going to take them. Okay. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Neither by dreams. Nor by Urim. Nor by prophets. No answers. No more. Silence. Now, I'm not saying now I want some of y'all to try to take this because I know how the enemy will try to work. This is how the enemy will try to work. Because there's time when you are moving in righteousness, when I told you the Lord would try you with his voice, and sometimes he's going to try you with silence. Or you going to still keep doing what I told you last and keep rejoicing and just praying, even when you don't hear my voice for a minute. Because that's, you got, are you going to keep walking in what I told you to do last? This is training. But this is not the kind of answer he's talking about. He has left him. Okay? He going to have to go to other people to get voice. And he, he chose the wrong one. He went to a soothsayer. He didn't even try to go to nobody else. He didn't ask him through prophet because the prophet can't just make something up. So he couldn't go to the prophet because he said he didn't ask him by dream, by Urim, which is the ephah thing, nor by, nor by a prophet. So you can go to a prophet and I ain't going to give him no answer for you. No answer. Okay? Okay? Let me keep going. Uh, he said his horse, uh, voice and he greatly trembled in his heart. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, he didn't answer him neither by dreams nor by Urim. The Lord didn't ask him with his voice. He didn't ask them by dreams, Urim, or prophet. Because he could answer either way then. And, and now, except by, you know, we don't do ephods and stuff. He answers by the Holy Spirit and by prophet and by teachers, okay? Their arrogant false security, the scorn for men that rule over these people, were, uh, wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scorn for men that rule these people, okay? He talking about in Jerusalem. These are the people that's been scornful over you. I did a full message on this. Therefore, says the Lord, judgment is overflow shall take you your hiding places. This is Isaiah 28, 16 through 20. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. That means he's been tested. A precious cornerstone. This is Christ Jesus. A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay on the line. This is the plumb line, and righteousness to the uh, righteousness, righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. This is a brimstone, and you take this by way of spirit. But some of this, we already know some physical things coming. Okay, and the water shall overflow your hiding places. This is the water of the word, the water of the spirit. The brimstone is the fire of God, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When they are moving in wickedness, they made an agreement with hell. They didn't chose to be twisted in their conduct, twisted in their walk, unholy in their movement. Okay? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. From morning to morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And, ye, and it shall be a vexation. Only to understand the report. You're going to be vexed. You're going to be, he, they're going to be vexed just to understand the reports that's coming out of the world now. Because he's not going to answer them no more. They are removed spiritually. Okay. That means his lamp, his light is him being with them. Okay. And he's going to be with you. Move forth and keep your integrity. Second Timothy 3, 8 through 9. Now as Jonas and Jumpers withstood Moses, so, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. These people who have come at you, who have suppressed you, who have hated you for the light you burn, when you've come nothing but earnestly in spirit, the Lord has judged between you and them. You have kept your honor. You have trusted in the Lord your God. You have not kept your, uh, uh, moved your hand nor your mouth nor your heart nor your mind against them, and the Lord has judged between you and them, and this is the rise of the Davids, and it is the fall of the Saul's. This is a prophetic word. You're going to see leaders being removed for people that they have oppressed. They 
refuse even to train up, who they hate without cause because of what is in them that the enemy has been able to use to cause them to come against you or to suppress you or to not acknowledge you or to have ill will against you. And he has gave time and time's up. This is the rise of the Davids and the fall of the Sauls. I want to take this word before the Lord because this is a prophetic word. And the Lord of God, for the kingdom of the coming of the, I, I'm telling you the coming of the kingdom of the glorious kingdom of God is here. Jesus is coming soon. But there's a lot of things he's going to do in and through his beloved before he comes. And those people that do know their God and shall do exploits shall rise up. And some of you are in the midst. I already told you and gave that word and prophetic word that he's either going to baptize the, the, the babies in the wombs with the Holy Spirit. So you all see them young with fire. And the youth that are being suppressed by these souls. And some of them, it's some of y'all older than. But it's just a spiritually speaking. The rise of the Davids and the fall of the souls. Those, who you, those of you who have not given your heart to the Lord Christ, I will beseech you by the mercies of God to try him and see he is good. Don't think you can change your concept, your behavior, your attitude. You can't do it. And I'm telling you now, don't let nobody tell you that the moment you get saved, all of a sudden everything going to stop. No, you're going to enter the battle then. You have signed up for his blueprint. You're going to enter the battle. That's when you go into war. Because this flesh is going to fight you. You're going to still want to do what you was just doing the day before. But you start to profess what the scripture says you are and who you are the moment you receive him. And you will watch those things fade away. Don't let the enemy trick you. There is a hell and there is a heaven. The Lord don't desire for no one to go. He wills for no one to perish. But soon there will be time. No more. Soon the gate for the Gentiles to come in will be closed. Don't let nobody tell you different. And those of you who are double stepping and say you belong to the Lord. It's going to be double up on you because you're supposed to know better. You just like having two children. Yeah, they can both be in their turn up stuff and they can have a friend over. That You're going to rebuke both of them, but your child going to get it. That's how it is with the Lord. You're supposed to know because you have come into the goodness and tasted of the Lord. So you are moving in rebellion. Now what you're ignorant of, there's some mercy on. But he's not going to allow you to stay ignorant because his word is right there. You have the mind of Christ. How do you have the mind of Christ? By way of his words. Those are his thoughts. Those are his ways. So take the word in. Grace be with you, beloved. Again, this message, the rise of the Davids, the fall of the Sauls, and this is prophetic. For the Lord, your God, has judged between you and he has judged between them. And they have been found wanting in the removal. Y'all going to see. Grace be with you, beloved. I love you all. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, work at evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. First Corinthians 9 11 reads, if we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. 
Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.